Hey everybody, welcome to Live Lessons. It is a very nice uh, Tuesday night here in Nashville, and we're very excited to have with us uh, Pete Hutlinger, a uh, fantastic fingerstyle solo guitarist, and we're going to get to know Pete a little bit. And uh, just wanted to kind of tell you what's going to happen here. We're going to be having some giveaways as well. Uh, if you want to be a part of our giveaways, which we're going to be giving away an acoustic guitar pack by Epiphone tonight, as well as uh, one of the Learn a Master Guitar courses, um, then you need to be actually logged in through Ustream. So you can go to Ustream.tv, and uh, you can log in there if you're w maybe watching us on Facebook or something like that. The only way you can actually be in involved and we can actually choose your name for a giveaway is uh, if you're logged in through Ustream. So that's Ustream.tv, and uh, we'll, we'll ship those anywhere in the world for all this stuff. So I uh, hope you're having a great night, and uh, we'll let's go ahead and uh, get started. Um, tonight we have, we're not, we're, tonight we're going to be talking about solo guitar, and we are very glad to have with us uh, the great Pete Hutlinger. Pete, <laughs> thank you so much for being part of yeah, all this stuff. Me, it is, uh, it's an honor to have you here with us for our Tuesday Night Live lessons. Well, great. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, we had initially booked Pete uh, a year and a half or so ago for our uh, guitar gathering conference, which was in... Uh, uh, July, I believe it was, of, of this past year, and uh, Pete was unable to make it, and so it's finally good to make connection right now. So Yes, it is. Glad to have you here. Let, enough of this talking. Let's get, let's gonna play, we're going to play a little bit, and uh, we're going to get started with a song, Sweet Georgia Brown. We're going to be playing this in the key of F, and uh, let's go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Um, so that was Sweet Georgia Brown. We did it in the key of F, so it goes through a few different chords there. D, G7, C7, and an F, uh, and then turns around, spins around at the end. So anyway, thank you so much, Pete, for uh, yeah. being here with us. Um, let's get started. How did you, how'd you get started playing guitar? Oh, like most kids, you know, I was, <laughs> I was um, in high school, and all my friends started playing, and I started right along with them. I'd been playing banjo before that, actually, mm -hmm. for several years, and uh, 
I went through about a two-week phase where I played the music of Kiss, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I sold my electric guitar as fast as I could <laughs> and got back on the acoustic guitar and just kind of fell into different groups of people playing, you know. Did you, did you come from a musical family? Not particularly. My mom played piano, but no one else in the family plays. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I didn't come from a musical family either. Nobody, even out into the cousins, plays. Yeah. And uh, mom just wanted a guitar player, so I was the last of the kids, so I was the one that got the lessons. Oh, that's good. I was the last, <laughs> too, and, and my mom didn't believe me when I said I wanted to play the banjo. She said, you know, she'd been through five kids already, and then I come up and I said, I want to play the banjo. She's like, yeah, sure you do, <laughs> you know, and I bugged her for about a year and a half, maybe two years, and then I had to save up money for half the banjo and, in order to, you know, get her to convince, you know, for yeah. me to convince her that I was serious, and then when I saved up $49, she said, okay, well, we'll go get a banjo. So we did. <laughs> Where did you grow up? Where are you? In Northern California. In Northern California. Yeah. And then in high school, we moved to um, a rural part of North, of North Carolina, which is not rural anymore, but back then it was, you know, I don't know, 30,000 people or something. And the nearest next town was 45 minutes away. It was all through the woods to get to the next town. It was, it was a nice change. Now, did you play in bands in s school, in high school, and things like that, or were you just always kind of doing the solo thing? Um, no, I played in lots of bands. Um, I didn't really get into the solo thing until after um, John Denver died. I was playing with mm -hmm. John when he died, and I thought, well, all right, yeah, I can see how fast uh, you, know, you can lose a friend and a gig yeah. and, and all that all at once. And... Um, so I, I started playing more solo gigs just to get some money coming in. Yeah. And then someone told me, hey, you should go to Winfield and compete in this competition. I thought, well, what am I going to do out there, you know, with yeah. competing a bunch of 16-year-olds who have nothing to do all day except <laughs> sit and play the guitar. But I went and tried it, and it uh, turned out I, I really had a, a passion for competing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did that for a few years. And, and, and you won it in 2000? Yeah. In 2000. And then, so that, how many years had you been going? The Winfield, uh, it's the Winfield uh, National Figure Picking yeah. uh, Championship out of Winfield, Kansas. And that, what time of year is that? It's the third weekend of September. Third weekend of September. If you guys aren't familiar with the Winfield uh, competition, just kind of type in Winfield Finger Picking, and uh, you'll find it on uh, Google. It is one, it is one of the It's the, the best festival you'll ever go to. Yeah. There is more music going on there than anywhere I've ever been. And there's, you know, anywhere between 15 and 18,000 people that come, and there's something like 90% of them play music. So a lot of them don't even go into the festival. A lot of them just camp, and they camp out for weeks before the festival even gets, uh, yeah. you know, starts. And they camp, and they play, and play, and they play all day and all night long, and it's the greatest fun you can have. I was, I was looking uh, on their website not too long ago at past Winfield winners, and boy, it is just a who's who of fingerstyle guitarists going all the way back into the early 80s and late yeah. 70s, I think. Yeah, some going. of the guys have gone on to make a name for themselves. Yeah. yeah. So. It's a pretty cool group to be a part of. Um, now, so then you, you, you've played with John Denver. You've, how, did you, how did you get hooked up with John Denver? I was uh, working on a record with a guy here in town named Mike Muldoon, and his brother was the uh, mechanic for John's Learjet from the time <laughs> John bought it until the time he died. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was being produced by a guy who worked for John named Chris O'Connor. Mm -hmm. And um, it was one of these records where, you know, they have no money mm -hmm. and uh, they need you to play banjo and guitar and electric guitar. Uh, oh, can you play 12-string guitar? And can you play slide? Do you play a dobro? And, you know, just it was one of these, you know, yeah, I'll do all that. And so... After a week and after I made about $100, you know, after <laughs> five long days of work, and they said, hey, you want to go work with John Denver? I said, yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. And um, next thing I knew, I was on a plane to Detroit. And how long did you work with John Denver? Uh, it was just under four years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've worked with uh, Faith Hill, did I see that? Right, and, and I did a recording Rimes. with her, and I've done some, some work with Leanne. Yeah, she's, mm -hmm. she's a real hoot to work for. She's... She's the most confident singer I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and she doesn't like to rehearse a lot. So you go out, you go out and you do a gig with Leanne Rimes, and you got to show up and know your stuff because she's, you know, you're going to be lucky to get any rehearsal. And if you do, you, you might get to run through it once, maybe twice, but probably just once. Yeah. And then you're on stage, 
and that's how we did um, um, we did the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, mm -hmm. and I rehearsed with her on her bus the night before while somebody was doing her feet, somebody was doing her hair, and someone was doing her nails. <laughs> and she was sitting there. She <laughs> goes, okay, what do you got? And so I said, well, okay, I, here's what it is. And, you know, I had this detailed arrangement. I had a key change and all this stuff. And she's like, okay, let me just hear the key change one more time. Okay, I got it. I'll see you tomorrow. And I was out, the, out of there, and we walked on stage the next night, and she just nailed it. <laughs> you know, I, I just thought of that because we, um, yesterday someone posted something from a gig that I did last weekend, and when it ended, this thing of Leanne Rimes popped up, I, and I said, oh, that outfit looks familiar, and yeah. I popped it on, and it was from that TV show that mm -hmm. we had done, and I was pretty tickled with the way that it came out. <laughs> well, let's talk about, uh, talk about your technique, and you're playing a little bit, and you're, okay. you're kind of known for... Uh, uh, these days for doing a lot of solo arrangements mm -hmm. and uh, uh, of just beautiful pop tunes and just your own stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I brought tonight was a couple of my tunes. Um, um, why don't I just play one for you sure, and, and sure, we'll sure. just go from and there. Which, which one is it? This is called The Small Stuff. This is The Small Stuff. Uh, guys, it is, uh, and guys and gals, sorry. Yeah, that's um, right. On our discussion board and the thread for this live lesson, I posted the link uh, for that, that actually has the music and the tab for this, uh, the song that he's about to play, the small stuff uh, PDF that's on there. You can also go to uh, Pete Huttlinger's website, PeteHuttlinger.com, look underneath the free tab thing, and it's there as well. So, uh, and so you, can, you can be practicing this as well. So here it goes. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, tell us a little bit about that tune. I know you can't go into great, you know, we can't fully teach it, but tell us yeah. a little bit about what you're doing there. Um, well, there's, there's um, several elements going on. The right hand, is, it's pretty simple what the right hand's doing. It's, you know, I'm, I'm real concerned with the bass line. You know. You got to have a strong thumb to, to pull something like this off. And are you're and you're in drop D tuning. I'm in drop D tuning. And you're are you muting that a little bit? Like yeah. Muting there a little bit on that bass notes. Yep, muting with the, the the back part of the palm of my hand here. And um, what I like is it kind of reminds me a little bit of Jerry Reed. A little yeah. there's a little Jerry, a little Chad, a little Tommy Emanuel in there. Is, you know, and and I I wrote the tune after I came home from a trip to Italy and uh, been playing with Tommy and. And a bunch of great players over there. I just got inspired when I got home, and and um, and the title. Well, it it came before I had my heart troubles. Um, kind of suits me so well that I like to play the tune a lot now because it's <laughs> called the small stuff, and really, it's all small stuff, as they say. You That's know? right. Uh, but the chords in the tune, you know, it's it's a D chord, 
and then to a, a D7 over F sharp, mm -hmm. and then G, and A, mm -hmm. and then D, and do that again. So then you go up to an A6. And then this is a B, uh, an E7 over G sharp. Yeah. And then you go to B7, E7, A7. an A7 augmented. Mm -hmm. Now some of those forms are probably going to look a little bit unfamiliar to you. Remember that low sixth string is down to a D, so, so if you're yeah, playing a G show you chord, where it's not like that. It would be... Yeah, the G is, is here because your G is up two mm -hmm. frets because you lowered it to, by two frets. But the B7, and there's the E7, and the A7 is a little bit tricky. So you have to get kind of a quite a stretch to get that. That looks like a tricky fingering combination. It, right there. It's a little bit tricky. Yeah. But you know, you you just have to when you hear something you have to work on it till you till you find now, a way to get it out. Now I notice you're playing with a thumb pick. Tell us about how tell us about that technique and how you got started playing with a thumb pick. Well I got started playing with a thumb pick because I started as a banjo player. So it was a real natural thing for me to to finger pick guitar mm -hmm. and actually flat picking was was uh, really secondary to everything I did on guitar mm -hmm. e even though I, I didn't I didn't plan on being a solo finger style guitar player I just kinda fell into it you know mm -hmm. it's like oh well, this is working you know <laughs> might have a career here you know <laughs> and uh, but yeah I just I use a a, a, um, a national medium mm -hmm. you know I, I love the the tip on it it's, it's a it's a good thick tip. I don't like a thin sound, mm -hmm. so I use a thick pick when I'm playing a flat pick like we played earlier, and I use a thick tipped thumb pick. I no, just I don't like those thin sounding picks. Yeah. You know, I, a guy came to me in a clinic and he said, man, mm. check this out, and he was playing something for me. I said, hey, let me see your pick. And I took his pick and I threw it over my shoulder and I gave him one of mine. I said, here, use that one, please. And he stood there, he was like, you just threw my pick away. I said. Trust me, you'll thank me for this one day. <laughs> Someday you'll look back and thank me. Yeah. yeah. It's just an awful sound. Uh, yeah. So now, because I've, I've got uh, a national, kind of an old national, uh, but I think, the, I think the difference in color is means nothing. I think it means nothing are, at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. You've uh, got a large and I've got a medium. Now, I, I saw it on, on some of the man. DVDs that you uh, were, had been playing with John Pierce thumb picks as well in the past. Yeah. Um, and the... the uh, there, it was just a little bit smaller and a little thinner tip, mm -hmm. and I still have bags of them at home, and so mm -hmm. I use them occasionally. But um, I was teaching at a at Winfield. I was doing a, an all day clinic there, mm -hmm. and I came back after lunch and couldn't find my picks. and And a woman said, "Oh, here, try one of mine." And I tried it on, and was like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> it's like the holy grail of thumb picks had just been <laughs> been uh, made aware to me. You know, it was so great. I, I thanked her a bunch, and, and I was on a hunt then to find all these picks I could find. Now, your guitar sounds so great. Tell us about that guitar you're playing. This guitar is a Collings. It's a, it's a new model. It's the Pete Huttlinger model. They, uh, they did this to, uh, to help me to help defray some of my huge medical bills from this yeah. last year because I spent many months in the hospital and yeah. uh, you know, got a heart pump and all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, so they did this guitar, and it's it's absolutely wonderful. They don't they can't make a bad guitar if they tried. It's it know? sounds glorious. And yeah, it's a it's a great sounding instrument, and um, and I'm really honored that they did this because they haven't done this um, in the past with other other artists. It's and it's, uh, it sounds beautiful. I was, I was so touched when I when I found out that they were doing this. I was really blown away. Uh, one of the things that um, is a little. Uh, how our relationship started is we had initially booked uh, Pete for our guitar conference uh, this past year, but we had actually booked him, I think, probably in October or something bef before that. And uh, 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 Pete, you've always had help. You've always had heart issues. And then uh, mm -hmm. tell us, tell the tell the folks about what's amazing about Pete is not only how great a player he is, but how great of a player he is despite these things that have happened to him. So tell some of our folks. What's, go what's going well, on with little you in the Johnny, last year? What happened to me was, uh, well, okay, I was born with a congenital defect. It's a pretty complicated issue. And uh, they did surgery when I was 13. 
And um, that kept me going for a good 30 years or so. And then I developed a, a rhythm problem and yeah. they, I went into Vanderbilt and they fixed that. And then uh, it started kind of slipping and sliding and I was kind of heading into heart failure over the last several years. And uh, I stopped working out maybe a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and I loved to work out and I just, mm -hmm. I just couldn't. I just, yeah. I'd go to the gym and I'd be walking on the treadmill so slowly I, I look like the old guys and I said, <laughs> I can't do this. So I quit going to the gym. And then last, um, well then if you back up to November of 2010, November 3rd to be exact, I woke up and had a stroke or I st had a stroke and woke up. I'm not sure which was the order, but uh, full anyway, out, I had full a out stroke, full out half stroke. Half my body was completely paralyzed. My wife called 911. They got me to the hospital and uh, through uh, some great doctors and a great decision by my wife, uh, they decided to go in and do surgery and they broke up the clot that was in my brain. Um, I, I, some people are thinking maybe they took out half my brain, but that's <laughs> another issue. <laughs> and, uh, no, uh, and so then I was, I was trying to recover from that. And then I went into severe heart failure. So I was just getting my plane back together. So well, tell us about that. You, because you had lost, you had lost control over half your body, and then within just within a, short a few time, days, I was playing guitar again. Maybe three or four days later. That's just amazing. I was playing guitar, sitting up in bed, and uh, but then uh, you know I was playing. I was playing okay, and then I took a nosedive. I remember, mm -hmm. I, and I just I I couldn't operate a flat pick at all. I mean, I couldn't play. I mean, I used to play that every day for years with mm -hmm. John. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to play it. I just would, I was the most confusing, frustrating thing. And uh, it's just getting to where I can, you know, flat pick some now. You know, like mm -hmm. the first tune we did was, I was flat picking. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was really frustrating. But then I had heart failure. And so it was so severe, they had to life flight me from uh, Nashville, from Vanderbilt down to Houston, Texas, where they installed this heart pump that was just in... Uh, uh, it, it's an experimental heart pump. Mm -hmm. So the big honcho down there had to call the honchos at the FDA and say, hey, we've got to put this thing in this guy or he's a goner. And they yeah. said, oh, we'll get back to you. Just kidding. They said, <laughs> you know, they said go ahead, put it in. And uh, so he did, and bless his soul, you know, Dr. Frazier, he, he saved my life. And, uh, and, um, and, so you and then I didn't, I was in the hospital, but, you know, I was so sick when I got there that I went into heart, uh, uh, my heart was failing, then my liver failed, my kidneys shut down. Everything was, you know, I was just checking out, basically. And, and uh, you had lost a bunch of weight you were at? Oh, yeah, I was down to 110 pounds. Yeah. Svelte, girls. <laughs> Svelte. <laughs> Not. I, I looked like, uh, I literally, when I saw myself in the mirror for the first time, I'd been in bed for a couple months before I saw myself in the mirror. Yeah. I got up and I looked like an Auschwitz victim. I mean, yeah. I was just skin and bones. And this is about a year ago at this time. No, this is just last summer. Wow. Where are we now? We're in February. So this yes, was this uh, seven or eight months ago. Yeah, seven or eight months ago. Wow. And um, so as a result of all that, I mean, I spent four months in the hospital down there in Houston after a month in the hospital here in Nashville, and I didn't play my guitar all that time. Yeah. I was, I was too sick to play. And then when I started playing, I, I told you yesterday, you know, it, it hurt. Yeah. It's like, why would anyone do this twice? It hurts to play the guitar. You know, I, <laughs> it, it was such a pain. So I got my, my wife brought home, uh, brought my nylon string guitar to me in, in Texas. And I started playing on that because it was a little, little easier on the fingers. And, um, and then one time I had my last hospital stay in Houston because the last month and a half or so I was there, I was in and out of the hospital. Yeah. You know, I'd go out to a hotel where my wife was staying and I'd stay there a few days and I'd go back to the hospital for a couple of days and it was back and forth like that until I was ready to come home. And the last day that I was there, I was there for a week and my wife brought my guitar and uh, I started playing and I was playing a bunch and then one nurse came and said, oh, you've got a guitar. Hey, will you come and play for my patient? I said, yeah, I'll go play for your patient. I went down, played for him, and I came out, and another nurse said, you got a guitar. Hey, you got to come with me and play for my patient. So I wound up being, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the roving entertainer up there, you know, pushing the IV and carrying my, my, my battery pack here and, and my guitar. And I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> and, and, and that's when I started turning around. You know, it's like, oh, when I could start playing again for folks, I was yeah. like, ah, yeah. I just felt so good again. That's right. Yeah. Just about that time, uh, all of this, of course, 
our discussion board was involved in all of this as well. Many of you, like me, were keeping up with uh, Pete and his blog and all the things that were going on. And uh, about that time, a, a benefit was uh, coming together um, called For Pete's Sake. And who put that together initially? Uh, Bob Burwell and Neil Spielberg. They uh, put Two, it together. A couple and, of bigwigs here in Nashville. And it was just a who's who of guitarists and musicians. And you had just gotten out of Houston at that point when that. I yeah, was they, surprised they let to me out, see you at the They benefit. let me come home for the benefit, and it was my stepdaughter's uh, birthday. Mm -hmm. And she hadn't seen her mom in a couple of months because she yeah. was with me. And so they let me go home. They gave me a five-day pass to go home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came home, and I had to leave the day after the, the benefit mm -hmm. and go back to Houston. You know, and, uh, Three days after that, I was back in the hospital again yeah. you know, for another week. Who, who all played for that benefit? Uh, let's see. Vince Gill... Um, you have to ask the guy who John was Oates. so sick. John Oates played there. John Jorgensen played. Uh, who's? Oh, Bailey and the Boys. Yeah, I just love Kathy Bailey and Michael Bonagura. They're so great. And um, oh, Jeff Hanna yeah. was there. Yeah. Uh, the Long Players, which is Bill Lloyd and a bunch of guys who they they play a record. Yeah. At each gig, they'll they'll take yeah, like remember, I've, Dark I've Side of the Moon or something, and they'll play that record at the gig. And uh, Becca Bramlett came and sang. Uh, Sean Della Croce came and sang. Mark Selby, he was so great. He opened the show, and he just killed it. God, he was <laughs> so good. Uh, that project was recorded, and is that what that's the? Oh, two different things. Yeah, they're okay. different things. Two yeah. different projects. Yeah, there's, a, there's another project that a guy named Trash and Porter, who I have never even met, bless his soul, he, uh, he lives in Florida, and he saw what was going on in my life, and he said, I'm going to do a, a project, and he got a bunch of the best finger pickers together and did a tribute CD called, mm -hmm. I guess, it's For Pete's Sake. Yeah. And, uh, and he's got um, Don Ross... Don Alder, um, it had some pretty uh, big names. Phil Kagi, yeah, I can't. Uh, Muriel Anderson, um, and they all would just send in a tune. All everyone just sent in a track. Yeah, like, yeah. no questions. They just sent in a track. Uh, and it was so great. That is uh, that project is actually available on iTunes if you want, and we do have the link to that that I put it up on our discussion board. So if you, if someone Fabian, maybe you can put up the link to that. Um, so, folks, if you want to look, look at that project, that's, that's actually on iTunes as well. In fact, a little history on my side of that. If you guys remember back when we had Jack Pearson for a live lesson months and months ago, after we finished up the live lesson, Jack had to get out of here. He was in a hurry to get out of here to go to Pete's Benefit that night. That's so, too cool. <laughs> and that was a Tuesday. Yep. It was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday because right. he, was, he, was, he said, I still have time to try and make it over to Pete's Benefit. So, uh, so. Uh, so anyway, a little bit, little bit of history with all that stuff. All right, okay. um, let's get into, um, it's about time that we give away some stuff. Oh, so um, My favorite part. Before we have Pete play a little bit more, I'll let him uh, catch his breath for a second since he's been talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> um, let's, uh, we're going to give away a couple Just of things. More where that came First from. thing we're going to give away is uh, the Gibson's Learner Master Guitar Course, which... Um, I did, and many of you have. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, gu guitar course, 20 DVDs. Teach, it'll teach, teach you how to play guitar from the beginning. Here's a guitar. It's got six strings, all the way through some fairly uh, advanced playing techniques. So someone is about to win this, and that winner is uh, Mudgy Girl. <laughs> I don't know if I <coughs> pronounced that correctly. M-U-D-G-E-E-G-I-R-L. You have won a Learn a Master Guitar course. You may already have one, but if not, you can give it to a friend. Um, and if you want me to sign it, I'm happy to sign that too. So just let uh, just put something on the chat about it, and I'll and I'll sign that out. What you need to do is um, uh, s send uh, an email to service at legacylearningsystems.com. Perhaps someone could put up the link to that and just get us your address and phone number and that sort of stuff, and uh, we'll send this out to you. So congratulations. Uh, mudgy girl. Um, the second thing that we're going to give away is a guitar pack 
by Epiphone. Let me put my guitar down here. <coughs> and uh, the good folks at Epiphone have uh, uh, given us this guitar pack. It comes with this guitar, which is not a bad guitar. So it gets a great sound and uh, has a pickup <coughs> on it as well. And uh, it comes with a little <coughs> amp, I think a 15-watt amp, and a case and strings and whatnot. So uh, it's a great little package. So the winner of that, you guys ready? Are you all excited about there? Here is the winner of that is Soul Jam, uh, S O U L J A H M, Soul Jam or Soul Ja M, Soul Ja M maybe. Um, you have won an acoustic guitar uh, pack from Epiphone. Uh, if you would like. Um, Pete to maybe autograph it. Let us know. Some folks don't want that. Some folks do. Um, you want to play us? Just to pick sure. a couple of notes on this? Sure. Yeah. Um, nice little guitar. So congratulations, Sol Solja M. Beautiful. Um, the, so that's that guitar. If you want, and that's how it sounds uh, when played by the master. Hmm. So um, I'll trade you back your lovely okay. Collins. <coughs> um, if you want that autograph, let us know. If you don't want an autograph, that's absolutely cool too. Again, send in your information to service at legacylearningsystems.com. Email address, mailing, shipping address, all that sort of stuff and a phone number so we can get in contact with you and uh, we'll get this out to you. So congratulations. Fun. I love giving away stuff. Love. wish I could give away more. Um, let's... Um, can you play us a tune? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I'll play the other tune that I... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. That I uh, gave you the tab to. And Just, what's the name of that one? Things Are Looking Up. Things Are Looking Up. Small stuff. Things Are Looking Up. I'm seeing a theme here tonight, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> So I'm going to start, for anyone who's uh, got the music already, I'm going to start at measure 13.
Yeah. Beautiful, Pete. Oh, thanks. Pete, you, <coughs> you are, uh, have come through so much, and uh, just as you were just playing that beautiful piece, I was just thinking, what does, um, how has going through all of this changed your outlook on playing, and what does guitar playing mean to you these days that it didn't mean perhaps before? I don't know that it means anything different, but I'm sure enjoying it a lot more. Yeah. I'm appreciating it more because yeah. uh, I've had to work hard to, to get back what I've gotten and uh, to be able to get out and play again. It's, uh, it's a gift beyond gifts. I mean, it's, it's so amazing. Uh, I, you know, I, yeah. I don't really know how to answer that other than that. I, I, know, I know many of our learners, they're, they're, uh, you know, they're going through the boring and the frustrating part of learning. Uh, practicing each day and that sort of stuff and they think gosh I'm, I'm, I'm never gonna get any better at this or I'm never gonna get any you know I'm never gonna be the guitar star that I want to be and you know all these things that happen in your mind and uh, just kinda going through some of the stuff that you have gone through and even even just listening to that gosh making music is uh, so vastly important and revives our our hearts. Yeah, it does. And, you know, I, I can relate to all those people who are struggling yeah. because I've been struggling so much over the last oh, five months, four months, whatever it's been since I got home, um, to get back to being able to play again. I mean, mm -hmm. I got home, I couldn't play a D chord. Yeah. I just couldn't make any, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Yeah. I just was struggling so much and, and I still have things that I'm struggling with every day, but they're getting better. Yeah, and so I can tell people that it's going to get better. You, yeah, you got to get better. You can't just stay where you are. Yeah. if you're dedicated, mm -hmm. you have to put the time in. That's that's the hard thing for most people. Yeah, you know, I had a guy here in town who owned a studio, and I was in this session one day at his studio, and he said, "Okay, if I got 15 minutes a day, what can I do?" I said, "Nothing. You may as well not play the guitar. If you only got 15 minutes a day, mm -hmm. forget it. But if you got 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes." later in the morning or early afternoon and 15 minutes in the early evening and 15 minutes before you go to bed, that's another story. Mm -hmm. And you can always find 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, pick something that you're working on, something that, you know, you got you to gotta be careful with the, the challenges you pick. You can't mm -hmm. pick something that's too hard. Yeah. You know, I got people trying to play Superstition who can't play, you know, Puff the Magic Dragon yet yeah. or something, yeah. you know, and, and it's like, no, 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 you have to take the things in order. You got to do the simpler things and work your yeah. way up. And, um, yeah. uh, you know, you, you, you just got to be careful and, and, and know that you can, you can get better. Yeah, that's right. You can get better. That's right. Well, we have lots of folks that are asking questions and different things. So let's jump into some of these questions. Um, let's see, Solo Surf, uh, you were asking what finger exercises does Pete do or other practicing techni techniques. Okay. In fact, Pete has even a course, uh, Essential Exercises for the Fingerstyle Guitarist, which is great. I've watched it. It's great. Brilliant. Yeah, I had to go back and actually listen to some of my own advice. <laughs> and I, I wrote an article for Premier Guitar in their last issue called A Bitter Pill to Swallow yeah. because I had to go back and take my own advice because I was trying to do things that I used to do, yeah. but I, I wasn't ready for them. Yeah. You know? And so I'll do things like uh, I'll do a slow tremolo. In a tremolo, the way you do that is you play your thumb and then your ring finger, middle finger, and first finger. And then, you know, and eventually you get... Did you, were you trained classically? Yes. <laughs> of course. That's not something that you usually just pick up, you know... Well, it, in the was, blues it was band. A, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of blues guys doing a tremolo. Well, I, I did take some classical lessons when I was young, yeah. and uh, I, I remember working on Rick Ritos de la Hambra, and I yeah. just loved that piece, and I just kept up that technique, and yeah. it's, it's fared me well over the years. But, you know, there are other things you, you do, like you just play... <laughs> What I'm doing there is just several elements going on. I'm muting my thumb, but I'm keeping this little bass line going with my thumb. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a good exercise to do. 
you don't even need all the chords. I mean, all the other notes in the chords. But then you add the chords in, and this is basically a B7 shape. It's an E7 to an A7, a D9 to a G. You know, um, but there's a ton of exercises you can do for your right hand. There's, there's the um, Oh, who like was Giuliani studies and things like Giuliani, that. Giuliani, yeah. Is that the guy who did the uh, 120? 120 right hand studies. Yeah. Right -hand studies, yeah. You can get those anywhere. You, they're all free on the internet. You can download those. You can't find the tab for them, but you can find them. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and what the heck? Maybe learn to read music. It can't hurt you. <laughs> it's frustrating at first, but it's not going to hurt you. That's right. You know, it'll only help you to learn to read music. But um, come up with simple exercises of your own, you know, just. And then work them through different chords, and all of a sudden, you know, something that's simple, if you put on some nice chords. All of a sudden, you're like, hey, maybe I got a tune here. Yeah, yeah. You know, you yeah. just, you never know. Talk to us about you, or your nails and nail care. Um, I know she's got nails well, on three. Steve, yes. Well, Steve. Hey, no, this, no, is, I, this is a guitar. I know, thing. I know. Are you kidding? We have guys that ask about this all the time. I know, I know I, more about my nails than my wife does. <laughs> <laughs> I go to a, a beauty salon, mm -hmm. and I, I get acrylics put on these three nails. On the so those are full-out acrylic nails. Those are not your nails. Underneath, underneath my nail, underneath, okay. but on the top, they just, you know, it's just this little powder and liquid stuff they mix together, and they paint it on, and... Mm -hmm dry it and buff them out and away you go and they they last me about a month cost me about 10 bucks and i thought well 10 bucks for a month's work that's yeah. that's pretty cost effective you know because they they don't break mm -hmm. they're not going to break you know and uh I and then you have the thumb pick on the thumb mm -hmm. and you have nails on one two and three or in index middle and ring yeah yeah mm -hmm. great um Dagbone from uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Uh, Dagbone. We have all the all their all Dag their uh, all their uh, discussion board names. Says I would like to thank Pete profusely for his "Learn to Play the Songs of Jim Croce." Oh, thanks, uh, Dagbone. Video. It has helped me find a good measure of direction for my playing. When did you do that video? That's one of your best selling videos. It's it? been um, maybe four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I remember looking on the Hal Leonard website then and, and and listed of, of top sellers, and that was right at the top. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, Nacogdoches Bob from Nacogdoches, Texas, my home state, says, uh, when playing along with the metronome, if I hit a wrong note, uh, many times it takes a while to recover from that to kind of get back uh, your balance, musical balance. Uh, what do you guys do to recover if you hit a wrong note? Well, uh, a couple of things. If you hit it in the, in the same place every time, stop, turn off the metronome, and work out that work part. Out. You know, just work out the part, whether it's, you know, finger picking or flat picking, whatever it is. Stop and work it out. If it's something that you just happen to do once in a while and it's in a different place each time, then you just have to go for it. You got to yeah. you got to keep the music going in your head the whole time. And if you make a mistake, you got to hear where it is and and pick up the, the next section of the tune. Um, like when we were playing. Um, uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not operating a flat pick very well, yeah. and so I'm you know making some mistakes and stuff, and I'm like, ah, but I'm still hearing the tune in my head, so I can keep in I'm, at least I was in the same place as you, you know. One of the one of the skills that that uh, you have to develop as you're as you're learning is the skill to not stop. When you just tell yourself, I'm going to play this song from point A to point B, and I'm not going to stop. And you're going to have a few flubs along the way, and you can't let those flubs completely derail your, your train there, and then you've got to regroup and come back. Force yourself to try and work through things. Uh, occasionally, as part of your practice, run in the tune. Run it from the top to the bottom, because you're going to be doing that when you're playing the song for other people or playing along in a band or playing along with a jam track or playing, playing along with anything. You've got to have that ability to... Everybody's going to bobble. Everybody bobbles. It's, it's how quick you can uh, uh, get your balance again after that and keep mm -hmm. going. Yeah. Um, and if you, you, know, if you make, a, make a wrong note and you're soloing, well, then it's jazz. So there you go. Um, Revster from Ontario says, Can Pete 
play one of his renditions from the Gordon Lightfoot DVD just for us Canadians. That may be a little... I haven't been playing any Gordon Lightfoot in a yeah, while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Um, uh, Revster will catch that another time. Blues, Bluezer 100 from Los Angeles, California says, I know you played alongside John Denver and that you created uh, an amazing four-volume set of guitar instructional DVDs of his songs. Uh, as a guitarist and musician, what is the most valuable thing you learned from him, from John Denver? Uh, Tell us about John Denver. What kind of a man was he? Let me answer the question first. The most valuable thing I learned from him was not to overplay when you're playing for a singer. Mm. Because I was, you know, coming in the band, thought I was going to be a hot shot, and I was playing a lot. And he took me aside one day and said, Pete, what I want you to do is when, you're, when I'm singing and, and you've got to play that note, and you just can't wait to play that note any longer, and that, it's just killing you. You're going to play that note? Wait just a little longer. Then play the note. And that was such a great lesson. That was the only yeah. thing you ever, only criticism I ever got from him. Yeah. You know, but it, it spoke volumes. Yeah. Because he was a true pro. Yeah. And uh, he knew what he wanted. He wasn't going to tell me what notes to play. Mm -hmm. he let, I never, you know, I was never given any direction like that. But I was, it was always play whatever you want. But just don't overplay. Yeah. And I, I, I learned so much from him. And, and I love playing for singers mm -hmm. as a result of probably from playing with him so much. He was quite a musician in his own right. Yeah, he was a good guitar player. Yeah, and he played banjo and all kinds of stuff too, didn't he? Um, Am I remembering that correctly? Or he probably did. He he never. I never saw him play banjo, but mm -hmm. I saw him. He grabbed my mandolin one day and started yeah. playing the Saint Anne's Reel on that, and yeah. and uh, some other things. Yeah, he was a good player. Hmm. But that, but then to ask answer your question, it was a great gig. Mm -hmm. It was he was a wonderful guy to work for. He was a a real sweetheart. He was. Um, he was kind of like what everyone thinks he was, you know. He's an all-around good guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, everyone goes through problems. You have good days and bad days, but overall, he was a great guy. He was the best boss I ever had in the music business. Were y'all on the road a lot? Uh, the first couple of years, we were gone a lot, and then the uh, next two years, he he started working a little less. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but we did probably. I don't know, four or five records and mm -hmm. a couple of TV shows in that yeah. time. I mean, he was always, yeah, he was always, always working. Busy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. One from the discussion or one from the <coughs> chat. Kim Butler is asking, what, f what fly do you use on bass in farm ponds in Ohio? Well, Kim Butler, who the heck fishes? <laughs> who the heck fishes in Ohio? Everyone knows that's no place to go fishing. That's a friend of mine. <laughs> oh well, there you go. There yeah, you go. you've done a lot of obviously not stuff. the right one because he keeps beating me when we're up there fishing. <laughs> he catches more and he catches bigger ones. Um, uh, J. Leo uh, from uh, the chat says, demonstrate a. A uh, finger rolling a chord, as if you're a finger rolling a chord, like one finger, or, uh, or maybe he's talking about arpeggios or something like that. John, maybe we can uh, get a get a closer shot of this. I'm guessing that's what they yeah. mean, yeah. And can you see his? fingers in there what so what I'm doing is I, I do it rather quickly I play my thumb index middle and ring Uh, let's catch another couple of these. Okay. Um, uh, brought us from Clinton, South Carolina. What what town were you from in North Carolina? New Bern. New Bern, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, uh, question for Pete. What advice do you have for older beginners, say in their 50s or 60s, who want to be able to one day play fingerstyle solos? Is this just a fantasy to hope that playing solos 
Uh, you can do that when starting out later in life. Should we lower our expectations so as not to become disappointed and give up? Never lower your expectations. <laughs> never give in. Never give up. That's right. If I can come back from the depths of where I was this last year and play again, you can do it too. Yes. Advice, get a good teacher. Get someone who, who knows what they're doing, and you have to ask around. You've got to ask some players. Yeah. You know, find some at your church or your local music store or something. Ask them who's a good teacher who can explain things well. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's something that I do when I teach people one-on-one. -on -one. I'd have them play for me first, and I'd watch them, and then I'd just pinpoint, all right, here's what we have to work on. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of teacher you need is someone who can help you with that. But if you're just starting, of course you can do it. Of course yeah. you can. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Trust me. That's right. Um, you can do it. Um, what are the general points if you're trying to, he goes on to say, uh, uh, a general roadmap of learning fingerstyle basics to, to fingerstyle soloing. What are the kind of the main aspects of fingerstyle playing? What should they first work on and then as they get more and more developed? Fingerstyle, the thumb. Thumb. Thumb first. I would just pick that. get used to playing that very quickly you're going to want to get your other fingers involved I mean you're going to get bored in a hurry but just pick simple songs you know Pick some simple songs, blue songs. Blue mm -hmm. songs are good. A uh, couple, we've got time for, gosh, just a, one or two more. Uh, Cat Five. Rancher, Tom from Georgia, <laughs> says, I heard uh, that the artist's response, oh, we've pretty much talked about that, uh, for uh, the For Pete's Sake album has been spectacular. The album, apparently he has it, is, a, is an absolute gem. Is there going to be a volume two for it? There is. It actually just came out. And I, I, what's the title of volume two? It's got a different name. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll give you the link. link. I'll put it up on the thing. Yeah, is it on iTunes? And there's going to be a volume three too. And and volume two is all fingerstyle players. Volume three has some other kinds of players on it, like John Oates yeah. does a song on it. I think uh, is Tommy doing one? I heard Tommy was going to do one for it, and mm -hmm. Richard Smith and uh, some others. Yeah. I, I got to contribute one to volume two. That was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Got to be on my own tribute record. <laughs> How many of you guys get to do that? <laughs> but that's great. There are, uh, I, as someone who has been through uh, uh, health issues and medical expenses, I know full well there are lots of dollar signs that, that come past and much of my paycheck goes to Vanderbilt University oh, in one man, way or I'm other. Oh, so sorry. And, uh, so yeah. yes, we know we're all riding about in the that. same boat. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, there is actually we put a link on our sales page. We have a February special that we'll talk about here in a little bit of uh, some of Pete's resources and things like that. If you go all the way to the bottom, there's actually a way to uh, to donate to. Uh, I think uh, there's a medical fund somewhere, and there's there's uh, there's a way to donate. So we put that link on our sales page as well. Um. One more. Stealth123 from Sheffield, United Kingdom. Uh, please tell us how you usually create your arrangements. And have you ever found it impossible to arrange a song? Never. <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> Stealth123. No, uh, how do I come up with arrangements? I, I take the, uh, the melody and the bass line into consideration first. Yeah. That's the first consideration. And then I fill in the chords around it. Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, I got rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just G, E minor 7, A minor 7, D7. Then I threw in some substitutions, mm -hmm. B minor 7 to B flat 13 to um, A minor 7 to D7. Mm -hmm. G, G over B, C, C sharp diminished, and then to uh, F, uh, excuse me, D13, and then a 
D9 over F sharp and G. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a lot of chords in that, but the melody... There's not a lot going on with the melody, mm -hmm. so it provides you to the ability to do more with chords. If the melody is is busier, then you do less with chords, and if it's a mm -hmm. more stagnant melody, then you can do more with chords. Yeah. You know, that, those are some good considerations to think of. Yeah. Um, you, know, you take a tune like Superstition, yeah. uh, which is you know one that I play a lot. That's just a bass line and a melody. Mm -hmm. that's enough. You know, you don't need any chords. <laughs> Beautiful. You know, <laughs> so there's different ways to approach them, you know. Wow. Um, Great. Beautiful. Um, uh, for some of you who may not realize, that is incredibly difficult, keeping that bass line going and doing a melody on top of it. Uh, piano players do that stuff all the time. On guitar, you realize very quickly, you don't have that many fingers. And, so you, have to, <laughs> and you have to control them all with one hand. So yeah. it gets very tricky. Um, one last thing. Uh, Craig from Northwestern Wisconsin asks, can you take him in to talk about some of the courses that are offered uh, in the special? So let's talk about that. That's a good transition into that. Um, we do have a February special that we put out um, today that we, along with our newsletter that has some of Pete's resources. First thing is check out Pete's website, PeteHutlinger.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Fabian, maybe, or John, maybe you can put up the link for that. Um, so Pete's got all kinds of things there as well. If you go to, there's one section on his website where it gets into tab and, and uh, resources, and they have all kinds of things there. Uh, Sir Duke, one of the great songs that you, that you had arranged, uh, the tab is on the on the website right there, so you could just download it and uh, start having fun trying to figure it out on your own. Uh, that's the part of uh, being a good to being a musician. You just share and give and steal stuff and and. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're not stealing this one. This is for educational <laughs> purposes only. <laughs> um, anyway, um, uh, Pete has all kinds of resources on his uh, resource page. Let's talk about a few of those. Um, he had graciously brought um, three different projects. Can you talk a little bit about maybe one of these each at a time? Sure. Um, this is the songbook, uh, Things Are Looking Up. Yep, this is the songbook. It goes with the album. It's all the guitar parts from the album. Um, and it's interesting because all the tunes on the album, I write them all as fingerstyle tunes but with a band in mind. Mm -hmm. But this time I recorded most of this album with a band, mm -hmm. but they're all fingerstyle tunes in my head. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wrote them all out, what I played on the records, and they stand as just solid fingerstyle tunes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a really fun project, and there's some, some challenges in there. One of the things I love about Pete's stuff, unlike so many guitar players that we work with, is uh, it's written down. You can learn from this. It's not just, you know, hey, I'm fabulous, but nobody can figure out what I'm playing. Uh, <laughs> it's all it's all written out, so you can figure out and work on it by yourself. That's a good. That's a great resource. And so this is written out well. So. I'm all about sharing. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, um, when did you do this one? This is probably the more recent of the ones, isn't it? Um, yeah. That that one was. Uh, three or four years ago. Three or four years ago. Yeah. Um, we've got a second one. There's three resources. So the book and the CD are, I think, 39. They've got them for, if I remember right. Um, then there's the Santa Rita collection. Tell us about that one. Do these are all fingerstyle. Those are all fingerstyle tunes from the from the record. The, the and uh, but that was a solo. Uh, the whole record was solo guitar, and. Uh, and that's exact transcriptions transcribed by yours truly. <laughs> so any mistakes that you find, you can write to me, but you won't find any. Um, <laughs> comes with the book and the CD. Again, I think 39 for that one. And then the last one, and this was the one that I was interested in, was um, you've got a great hymns project, Volume 1. Is there a Volume 2? There is a Volume 2 also. Uh, this comes with a book, and uh, the CD is actually part of it as well. Tell us about this one. I'd been a asked for many years to write down some of the hymns that I had performed mm -hmm. live, mm -hmm. and, and a couple that I'd recorded over the years, 
And I thought, well, why don't I just do a whole project of them? And, you know, hymns are a great resource for anyone who's trying to, yeah. to learn to arrange because the melodies on some of the most beautiful ones are not real busy melodies yeah. because they're trying to get a message across. Yeah. So the melodies, uh, and they, they allow a lot of room for an arranger to come up with some beautiful parts on there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'll play, let me just play a little sample of one sure. on there uh, called On Eagle's Wings. It's one of my favorites, and I was struggling with how to come up with how to arrange this, and I thought, well, this is a project for him, so WWJTD, mm -hmm. what would James Taylor do? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, then, and then I had it, I, so I came up with this intro, it's kind of reminiscent of, of one of his, and, uh, and, and it goes into the tune. It's a beautiful piece of music, beautiful. you know. When you start putting some of your influences in yeah. there, it, 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 you know, I can I can point out everything in there that, that I stole from James Taylor's p guitar playing, yeah. you know, and how he arranges tunes. Hmm. And I just said, well, what would he do? And I came up with that arrangement. I was like, ha! Huh, I play that one all the time now. Yeah. yeah. Oh gosh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, what kind of crazy looking capo is that? This is um, an Elliott capo. It's built by Phil Elliott. They're um, they're a bit pricey, but they're worth every penny. Can you sh can you show and that up there? Yeah, um, it has a push button on the side, and uh, so it, it it locks into place and it won't pull up. And this push button, you just push it in and it pops open. And the nicest thing is it stores right behind the nut on the guitar. You wow. just tighten it down just a little bit, and you're good to go. So it almost never comes off the guitar unless I'm changing strings. Hmm. Elliot Capo. Elliot Capos. Um. There's also one of the sales that we're doing. So you can buy any of those uh, projects, the book and the CD. I think we have, you know, you can buy each one of those, or you can buy the bundle of all three, uh, which is great. And I think we have the bundle for like 89 or something like that. Uh, the link to that uh, is if you looked at our, if you're looking at the Ustream page right now, uh, underneath the video box, there are three buttons. The first of those buttons goes to our February sales. And if you just click on that one, I think it's reddish or something like this. Anyway, it says February sales, if I remember right. That will get you to our sales page, and that'll get you. You can get any of uh, Pete's resources there, any of the book and CD combinations, or the bundle of all three of them. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to, uh, to put on here as well was uh, some of Pete's great educational resources, because that's another one of the things that he has done so well at. And I have looked at these. these this is great stuff. There's two DVDs in this series. Um, or that we have bundled for our, for our uh, sale is the essential exercises for finger style guitar, um, which the the book is actually on the DVD as well, so you can uh, download and print out the book as well. Mm -hmm. um, wow, great stuff! Can you tell us about this one? It's pretty much what it says in the title. It's a bunch of exercises that are necessary for anyone who wants to get serious about playing fingerstyle guitar. It starts easy and it gradually gets more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and I and I put a couple of tunes on there too, yep. so you get you can apply a lot of the stuff that I that I taught. Uh, and the music as well is on the is on the uh, the PDF that can be printed out. Another one that it fascinated me was the a guitarist guide to better practicing which this immediately caught my interest there. So we put that in the bundle as well. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you can get both of those for, what do they have them for? I think 49 So that's, uh, that's the scoop with all of Pete's resources, and I would encourage you to go out and uh, click the link and uh, buy everything you can. Um, it's great stuff. 
good, very good educational material. Go to Pete's website, PeteHutlinger.com, and uh, take a look at all the great things he's got there. This is just a, a small fraction of the things that he's done. He's done all kinds of DVDs uh, for, gosh, you've done Dan Fogelberg, you've done Jim Croce, you did Gordon Lightfoot, John Denver. I did a project of hymns. Um, there's one over there that you didn't mention, uh, uh, Pete Hellinger's Wonderful World of Chords. There's this. Right. I go through a ton of chords. Uh, so it goes for, like, from entry level stuff mm -hmm. on to uh, some uh, sort of intermediate advanced stuff mm -hmm. on there. And, um, that's, uh, and that's, that's where you printed out the chords to, yeah. to um, uh, Sweet, Sweet Georgia, Georgia Brown. Brown. I got off of off the PDFs yeah, yeah. for these different things. Also, um, if you're interested in the, uh, the guitar course that I did, the Gibson's Learn and Master Guitar Course, it's got 20 DVDs in it and uh, a book as well, jam along CDs so you can practice. Uh, basically, a lot of the things that we talked about today were in around session 10 of the course as we're talking about finger style in that session. So uh, a lot of these techniques uh, uh, are part of the whole world of finger style and that uh, is covered in session 10 of the guitar course. So if you're not familiar with that and you're interested in kind of a step-by-step -step approach to learning guitar and guitar skills, check out that. That's one of the links as well. Underneath the Ustream video, there's a little box there that goes to the Learn and Master Guitar course. The other uh, box, in, which I believe is in the center of our three boxes, uh, underneath the Ustream video goes to Gibson Skills House, which is an area that we put out uh, guitar educational content on Gibson.com. And so we have all kinds of stuff going on on Gibson Skills House. Um, we've had new lessons that went up this week. Today, I did uh, a new lesson went up that I did on uh, strumming. We also had two new song lessons going up, Reeling in the Years by Steely Dan and uh, I Fought the Law by The Clash. Uh, both those song lessons are up on Gibson uh, Skills House. So um, Fabian, maybe you can put up the link for that as well. Hey, did you ever used to have one of those t-shirts that said, I fought the lawn and the lawn won? <laughs> That would be, I've done that. I've, <laughs> I have fought the lawn yeah. more than once. Um, hey, our newsletter did come out today. Uh, barely. We just barely got the thing out. Um, but it came out today, uh, uh, our February Learner Master Guitar newsletter with all kinds of uh, uh, video tips and things like that. I did another video lesson there on uh, the cage system and uh, uh, assimilating chords by chord shapes and things like that. Check out the newsletter. If you are not currently getting our newsletter, uh, then uh, you could, there is a link, which I believe is in our links page on the discussion board uh, for this lesson that you can sign up for our newsletter. We'll send you one every month. All kinds of great things on with that. All right. We are in the home stretch. Our next live lesson after this one is going to be February 21st, and we're going to be talking about notes in the uh, first position. Um, if you're around session one through four, maybe sessions one through six, uh, this is for you. Uh, we always, we've kind of covered a lot of advanced uh, material this lesson. Uh, next time on February 21st, we're going to be covering notes in the first position, and I'll give you some songs and some fun resources for that. We will not be having a lesson on uh, February 14th because, of course, it's Valentine's Day, and my wife would kill me if I had a lesson on Valentine's Day. So all of you guys, make a note. Make a mental note right now. You got to go get a card, candy, all that stuff. Prepare. Girlfriend. <laughs> you got to get a girlfriend. If you don't have a girlfriend, it's Valentine's Day. So uh, anyway, so the next lesson will be February 21st. So um, Pete, what a joy having you here uh, oh, thanks. with us. It's um, a pleasure. Can you, uh, can you play us out with something? Yeah. Why don't I play I Got Rhythm? <clears throat>
<laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks for being part of the live lesson with us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>